Hello friends, it's Lisa and welcome to a spooky 24-hour readathon vlog. So as I've done the past couple of years, I wanted to celebrate Halloween and spooky season by doing a 24-hour readathon vlog. I absolutely love doing 24-hour readathons. I think they're so much fun. So of course I want to keep the tradition going. This is the third year I've done this and it's just really fun. So excited to read some spooky books with you all for the next 24 hours. But this year I'm going to be doing something a little bit different on top of the normal challenge of trying to read as much as possible in 24 hours. This year I'm going to see how far I can get into the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson in 24 hours. <laughs> so actually one of not only one of my first 24 hour readathons that I'd ever done but the first year that I did a like Halloween themed 24 hour readathon I read the first book in the Truly Devious series and since then I have yet to continue on with the series but I really want to so I figured kind of forcing myself to challenge myself to read as much of it in 24 hours might be the best way to do it. So I'm going to be starting this 24 hour readathon off by rereading Truly Devious the first book in the series and then we'll continue on to the rest of the books. There are currently four books out in this series so we're just gonna see how far I can get and I definitely need to start with a reread of Truly Devious as it's been two years since I've read this book and I don't remember a lot of the details but from what I do remember about this book and this series is we're following Stevie Bell who starts attending Ellingham Academy and this academy is for kind of the brightest smartest kids they all kind of have these like certain areas of expertise these certain things that they're really passionate about and know a lot about so for Stevie Bell that's true crime she's very knowledgeable knowledgeable about true crime. So she starts attending this school and her plan while she's there is to solve this cold case that happened from the 1930s involving the owner of this school. So back in the 1930s, the owner of this school, his wife and daughter go missing and no one has ever been able to figure out what happened to them. So Stevie's kind of determined to figure that out. But while she's attending this school in the current day, there's another mystery that starts to happen that she also has to try and figure out. So I think that that's kind of the case with the at least first three books in the the series. I know Stevie trying to solve this 1930s cold case is kind of a consistent plot throughout the first three books in the series and then each book has its own individual mystery happening in the current day timeline as well so I'm really excited. I'm hoping that this series is a series I can just fly through. I'm hoping it's super engaging. I remember I think I read the first one pretty quickly. I mean I was reading it during the 24-hour readathon but I found it really interesting and really like engaging and I just wanted to know what was happening and as I literally don't remember anything about this book I feel like I am going to be just as engaged the second time around and then after I finish my reread of this I'm going to be able to move on to the books in the series I have not read. I'm really excited to see kind of the conclusion to this 30s cold case because I really have no idea where that's gonna go and I'm really interested to see how that all wraps up. So I'm excited to read the series and see just how far I can get in 24 hours. So yeah, that's a TBR for the readathon, the Truly Devious series, and we will see just how far into it I can get. Also, if you are concerned about spoilers for this series, I plan on talking about no spoilers in this vlog. I'm gonna keep this vlog spoiler free so we can all just hang out and celebrate Halloween together. So do not worry about spoilers, but I am really excited to find out all of the twists and turns in this series and find out what really happened in the 1930s, but also see what other mysteries Stevie Bell gets herself involved in. I think it's going to be a really fun time. But yeah, the readathon, I'm going to start at 1 p.m. and it's currently like a little before 12.30. So I'm going to go have some lunch, start mentally preparing to read for 24 hours straight, and then I will check in with you all when the readathon officially starts. Okay, this is Lisa from the future. I just wanted to pop in before we got into the rest of the vlog that there's not a whole lot of b-roll for this vlog. It's a very chatty 24-hour readathon vlog simply because I actually accidentally deleted all of the videos off of my phone and I have most of them still like on my laptop and stuff since my last backup but the last time I backed up my phone was like a year or two ago so any of the videos that I've had from then I don't have anymore so all of the b-roll that I filmed on my phone for this vlog is gone. So if you're wondering why this vlog maybe isn't as fun or just doesn't have that like b-roll to music stuff that I like to include in all my vlogs, that is why I tried to have it. But I didn't want that to stop me from uploading this video because realistically the parts where I'm talking about the books and my thoughts are the most important parts. So <laughs> but if you were just wondering where the classic excessive Lisa b-roll featuring Sam is in this 24-hour readathon, that is why. Okay, I hope you enjoy the vlog. <laughs> So 
So I wanted to give a bit of an update because we're almost six hours into the readathon. It's now 6.54, so we are approaching hour six. And I wanted to update on where I'm at in Truly Devious. So the first like five or so hours of the 24 hour readathon, I actually was chatting with Darian and Casey and they're not doing this 24 hour readathon with me. It's actually weird to be doing a 24 hour readathon like by myself. I'm so used to them being a part of it with me, which is why I'm like, I know you're not doing it, but you still have to hang out with me and chat with me. So I'm glad we got to do that and we all were productive. We all did our own things and I did get a good amount of reading done while we were chatting. But yeah, it was nice to chat with them and do some reading and then I took a break for dinner, but now we're back and like I said, it's almost seven o'clock. So I still have a good amount of the readathon left ahead of me. I am on chapter 16, page 228 of Truly Devious. I'm a little over halfway. Yeah, there's 416 pages in this book. So I'm a little over halfway and I think my plan is to at least finish Truly Devious and get like halfway through The Vanishing Stair, I believe that that's what the second one's called, before going to sleep tonight. Could be a bit of a challenge because I'm not great at staying up super late during 24-hour readathons. I think the longest I've ever made it was like 2 a.m., which, you know, that's, that's late. For a granny, that's late. <laughs> I definitely think that that's my goal, but it would be great if I could get farther into the Vanishing Stair, but obviously I do need to finish this first. <laughs> and so far this has been an enjoyable reread. I think because of the fact that I have forgotten so much about this book, I really only remembered that Stevie Bell goes to this academy and that there was some mystery that happened in the 30s. Other than those things, I really didn't remember a lot of this book. I didn't really remember what happened in like the current day timeline. I have no idea where that goes, like where I'm at right now in the book, that like event has just kind of occurred. And so the rest of the book is going to be Stevie trying to figure out what happened in the current day. And I have no idea how that goes. Like I literally do not remember how that wraps up. So I'm excited to like reread that and figure it out again. <laughs> but it's been nice to get familiar again with all of the details of the cold case from the 30s and all of the different characters in the present day and all of that. So it has been, I think, beneficial for me to do a reread. I don't think I could have just gone into the second book because I would have forgotten way too much. So I'm happy that I did decide to do a reread and I'm still enjoying it. I really love the setting of this book. I love not only that it's set in Vermont and like for me it's very clear to picture in my head, but also I do really love the like school setting as well. I think that that really adds to the experience and the fact that this school is set in like this mountain and it's very like isolated from everything else. Cars can't even get to the school, like you have to take a carriage up to the school to get there. So I really love the setting of it and yeah, I'm interested to see how it all ends because I clearly forget everything that happened. So it's just as engaging the second time around. I also did decide to pick up the audiobook for this and I haven't really listened to the audiobook just by itself. I have been mainly listening to it while I've been reading along with the actual text. And I think I'm going to do that with the rest of the books in the series throughout this 24-hour readathon because I think it's beneficial for a few reasons. I think it helps me like really absorb and focus on what I'm reading. It's making sure that I'm actually absorbing all of the information. I feel like it's helpful with like remembering everything. It's also helping me, I think, get through this book a little bit faster. When my mind starts to wander, the audiobook is still playing, so it kind of reminds me like, oh yeah, I'm reading a book, I need to focus. So I think that that's helpful when I'm trying to read as much as I I'm trying to in 24 hours. So I think I'm going to do the audiobooks with the like physical books or the ebooks for the rest of the series. And the audiobooks are really great. I really like the narrator. So that's also a bonus. But this is the only book that I own physically. So the rest of the books I'm going to be reading as an ebook, which reminds me I should probably charge the iPad. There we go. I meant to do that earlier and I completely forgot. So I'm going to do that now. <laughs> but I am going to have, I think, the ebooks and the audiobooks for all the books in the series so that I can really fully be grasping what I'm reading, but also be reading them very quickly so I can try and get as much done in 24 hours because that's the goal. <laughs> but yeah, it's only like seven o'clock. Like I said, it's still early in the evening. So I think my plan is just to read for the rest of the night. I might get into my pajamas. I really want to make a hot chocolate because that just seems like the perfect cozy thing to do for a 24-hour readathon. But it's actually Actually, like pretty humid out. It's not like super warm outside. It's not cold, but it's just been like a really rainy day today. So it's been really humid. So it's not like the best hot chocolate weather because I'm just already warm, but I might do it anyway because I don't think I can deny myself a hot chocolate. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I'll make a hot chocolate. Maybe I'll do a face mask. That could be fun. That could be nice and relaxing. But I think the plan for the rest of the night is just to read as much as possible. And I'm hoping that I can get to at least the vanishing stare before going to sleep tonight. <laughs> all right i have officially finished reading truly devious and 
I ended up keeping my four star rating. That's what I gave it the first time I read it two years ago and I just kind of, I quickly put it through Copile and it came out as a four star so I decided to keep it. I still really enjoyed it the second time around and there's still a lot of unanswered questions about things that happened obviously in the like 1930s storyline but also in the current day as well so I immediately jumped into the second one, The Vanishing Stair, and that's what I'm currently reading now. I'm up to chapter two so I'm not very far in but I once again have the audiobook for it so I'm hoping that I can get through it quickly and maybe finish it tonight before I go to sleep. I don't know. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> and I'm excited to finally be reading something from this series that I haven't read before. I'm excited to get the new information. So I'm excited to keep going with this and it's actually, it's almost 1030 at night. So I'm gonna see how late I can stay up before I need to fall asleep and see if I can finish this tonight. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Hello, friends. Good morning. We are officially in the final few hours of the readathon. We're actually it's 10.57 right now, so we're approaching the final two hours of the readathon, but I did quickly want to give some updates on like my reading progress. So I think I did say last night that I finished Truly Devious, gave it four stars like I did the first time, and I had a good time with it. Like, I think the whole thing with this series is like, is it the best series and the best books I've ever read? No, but they're really fun, and you know, sometimes that's all you want. Sometimes that's all you need. <laughs> I will say there is something, I think I mentioned this the first time I read it too, but at some point in this book, Janelle, who is Stevie's like really good friend at the school like her best friend at the school. At one point Janelle corrects Stevie on the pronouns of another character named Vi and Stevie's like oh, okay thank you for letting me know great but then throughout the rest of the book Stevie proceeds to use the wrong pronouns for this character and it just like is really irritating every time she does that. So it's just really frustrating to read over and over again especially because it kind of gave the vibe that maybe the author just like threw in the fact that Vi uses they them pronouns as like a last minute like thing and I don't know it just it kind of bothered me but the rest of the book was really great really entertaining very fun and I finished that and then immediately jumped into the second book The Vanishing Stair which I did finish last night before going to sleep. <laughs> Somehow I managed to stay up to 2 a.m. I think 2 a.m. is like my cutoff for 24-hour readathons. That's typically the point where I'm so tired that I start to feel sick so that's what I'm like okay I have to tap out but it was perfect timing because I finished The Vanishing Stair like right before 2 a.m. and The Vanishing Stair I did end up giving three and a half stars so not quite as good as Truly Devious and that's just kind of how I felt about The Vanishing Stair. I don't think it was as good as Truly Devious. I don't think it was as engaging. I think like we did get some good reveals and some good questions answered and obviously there were even more questions provided in the second book but I was really surprised that we did get answers to certain questions and certain things were revealed in the second book. I was just expecting everything to be pushed until the third and final book to really get all of the answers we wanted so it was nice to get some answers in the second book but like the overall plot kind of leading up to getting some of those answers was just not as interesting for me I feel like like the truly devious plot the whole time I was really engaged with and I think if I wasn't trying to read this book quickly for a 24-hour readathon. I don't know if it would have been like as much of a page turner as Truly Devious was for me. Like I definitely still was interested and wanted to know answers to the things that were happening in the current day and also in the 1930s, but I don't think like the actual plot of everything else kind of going on was as interesting to me, but I still really enjoyed it. So a three and a half is not a bad rating, but it just wasn't like as good to me as Truly Devious was. Also something else that I think I was saying like in the intro of this vlog is that I thought there was like a mystery that happened in the current day and it was a new mystery for each book in the series but actually the things happening in the current day are kind of all strung together they're all connected so it's not like a new mystery starts up each book which I think is more realistic I think it's if she had done a different mystery each book in the current day it would have been like how many things can happen at one place. It still kind of already feels like that. Like how many of these bad things can happen at this one school? <laughs> but I do like that the mysteries and things that are happening in the current day do all connect as well and just continue to build off of each other and it provides some answers but also just more questions for things happening at that current timeline. But also I think there are a lot of connections from the 1930s and the current day timeline and the mysteries happening. Like I think that there is a sort of connection there and I think it's really interesting to read about. But anyway, The Vanishing Stare gave it three and a half stars liked that we got some answers to some of the questions that we had but just didn't find it as engaging as the first one but I did move on to the third book in the series The Hand on the Wall. In the ebook it says I'm on page 169 of 402 but the audiobook I'm 43% of the way through so I'm almost halfway. I did end up getting the audiobook for the third one as well. I just also really like the audiobooks. I like the narrator so that's been really nice to have on as well. I also think that's why I'm like getting through these books so fast is having the audiobook to 
to read along with the ebook. But yeah, so far with The Hand on the Wall, I am enjoying it. I think I'm enjoying it more than the second one. I think just like the pacing is a little bit better. I think that's like what my problem maybe was with The Vanishing Stairs. I just didn't love the pacing of it or just like the actual plot was a little bit more slow and not as interesting until the end. But this one, I feel like a lot more is happening in just even the first half. It's not like we're getting a lot of the action in the kind of final half of the book. It's kind of been consistently happening throughout this whole third book. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm excited to see how it all wraps up because even though there's more books in the series after the third one, I know this is when the kind of mysteries that we've been following so far in this series, the things in the current day, as well as the 1930s cold case involving the owner of the school, all of that gets resolved in this book. So I'm excited to finally get all of the answers and figure out what is actually going on. And I'm just really excited to get to the end. So I'm going to stop babbling so I can actually read the end and figure out what's happening. And like I said, I have like two hours left of this readathon. So I'm going to just spend the next two hours reading as much as possible. And I'm thinking I might be able to finish the third book. I might be able to complete the original trilogy, which I'm good with that. Cause honestly, I haven't heard the best things about like the fourth book. Cause it's kind of, it's following Stevie, but it's not set at the Academy. It's like a different setting and it's a different mystery kind of going on. So I haven't heard like the best things about it, but I'd be happy with just reading the original trilogy. So I'm going to go get reading and hopefully I can get this book done before the 24 hours is up. All right, the readathon has officially come to an end and with like maybe 30 seconds to spare, I finished The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. And this one I'm gonna give four stars. I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed the series as a whole. It was really fun. And this book, we get a lot of the answers. We get all of the answers really to everything that was really happening. And something I really enjoyed about this whole series was that I really had no clue what was going on. I had no predictions. I really didn't expect or predict any of the reveals, like I didn't predict anyone that was going to be involved. I had no clue what was going on at all. So that was really nice to read the series and just be able to go along for the ride and be surprised by all of the reveals and twists and turns. But also in this final book, we get all of the answers that you are looking for this whole series. And it was really satisfying to me the way everything came together. I really loved the way everything just worked together. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but I just really like the way all of the facts lined up and everything, how it was revealed. And I just really found the ending very, very satisfying, which is always good. I didn't predict anything and it was satisfying. I feel like that's like everything I could ever want with a mystery and or thriller. <laughs> Cause I do kind of feel like a good majority of the mysteries and thrillers that I've read, I've been able to either predict everything that's happening or just like the ending is not very satisfying, but this had both of the things I think I look for in mysteries and thrillers. So I really enjoyed this series. I thought it was really fun. I think it was like the perfect series to marathon for a 24 hour readathon because it kept me really engaged pretty much the whole time. And it was just such a fun series to get sucked into and the mystery itself was really engaging and interesting. I also did like the characters as well. I will say Stevie did have moments throughout the series where I was like, girly, what are we doing? Like she had moments where I was like, not her biggest fan, but for the most part, I did like her character and I liked a lot of the side characters. I don't know if I've mentioned the fact that, that Nate is like my favorite character out of this whole series. I just think he's so great. <laughs> Between the characters Nate and David, who is another side character and actually like the love interest, I guess, for Stevie, they provided a lot of the humor in this series so and it's funny because their types of humor and the types of jokes that they would make were very different but both of them made me laugh a lot throughout the series so that was good too because obviously the series is like there's a lot of death and a lot of drama and a lot of sad things being discussed so it's nice to have some lighter moments and some funny moments as well that's another thing i wanted to talk about there is a bit of a romance in this series which i can't say i was the most invested in i didn't dislike it by any means like i was rooting for them i guess but it just wasn't something that i was super invested in it didn't feel like super well developed. I guess it kind of just happened very quickly. I feel like in the first book, but I also think part of it might just be because I'm not in the age demographic for this series anymore. So maybe that's why I didn't have like as big of an attachment to the romance in this series, but still something that I enjoyed and added a fun little element, I guess a bit of extra drama. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm going to give The Hand on the Wall four stars. I really enjoyed it. 
it. And this was such a fun series to read, and I'm glad that I managed to kind of marathon it for this 24-hour readathon. I'm also very impressed that I managed to read the first three books in this series. I honestly, getting started into this 24-hour readathon, I was like, I'll be impressed if I make it halfway through the second one. Like, that's where I was thinking I was going to get up to. So very happy I managed to read, like, the main first trilogy in this series. I don't know if I plan to continue on with the rest of the books. I've heard, like I was saying, like, not the best things about the fourth book. And I know it's, like, it's still following Stevie, but it's very separate from the series like this series wrapped up in the third book so I don't know if I'm going to continue on but I did have a good time with the ones I have read so far but we'll see if you've read the fourth one I'd love to know your thoughts and if you would recommend me picking it up but I am happy that I finally read this series and it was a really fun time and perfect for a spooky 24-hour readathon oh and I need to calculate how many pages I read so I'm gonna go do that math real fast <laughs> all right so as I said I did only have the first book in this series in paperback and that's the only one I own physically so I just based the kind of numbers and my calculations based off of the pages that Goodreads provides for the paperbacks for the second and third books. So with those numbers I ended up reading exactly 1,200 pages. I think that that might be one of my best 24-hour readathons. I do think the audiobooks were a big help in getting me through this series a lot faster and I really liked the audiobooks. I liked the narrator so definitely would recommend if you're interested in picking up this series. But yeah I'm very happy that I was able to read the first three books in the Truly Devious series and finally get the conclusion to these mysteries and things that I was curious about back in 2020 when I read Truly Devious for the first time. I'm glad I finally have all the answers and I know what happened. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this 24-hour readathon. I hope that this was enjoyable. If you've read this series, definitely let me know your thoughts down below. I would recommend keeping it spoiler-free in the comments. I don't want to accidentally spoil anyone, but I'd love to know your thoughts on this series if you've read it. But I think that that is going to be it for this spooky 24-hour a readathon vlog. So thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Halloween and I will see you in my next one. Bye.